Apple's October 16 event just happened, and as we predicted, we did get new iPads, though that plural is actually not accurate. There's a lot to talk about this event, so I'm Jaime Rivera. This is Pocket Now, and these are the things that we liked about Apple's October 16 event and the things we feel Apple should have improved. Let's begin this video with the things we loved about the event, starting with iOS 8.1 and OS X Yosemite. And uh, truly, we don't really cover desktop operating systems here, but uh, the fact that iOS 8.1 talks to OS X Yosemite better than any other competitor out there, including Android and Chrome OS, including Windows and Windows Phone, this is really the way it should be. Products should talk to each other. There should be a value for you to buy an iPhone or an iPad and buy an OS X computer, a Mac. In the same fashion, buying a Windows Phone should give you benefits having a Windows computer. Apple is the first company that really figures it out. You can start something on one product, finish it on the other with continuity and a handoff, which is great, especially for phone calls. And this happens with OS X Yosemite, which is available today for download, and it is free for any MacBook user, or at least the ones that apply. And in the same fashion, we will be getting iOS 8.1 as of Monday for a free download as well. Apple Pay will be included with this, and we should expect some retailers to improve implement this soon, and you can expect the video of what Apple Pay is like from us coming very soon as well. The next thing we loved about the event is definitely the iPad Air 2, the one we were waiting for. Mainly for a couple of reasons. Even though some of you may consider this to be a minor upgrade, thinner is important in a tablet if you have to be carrying it around all the time. That's a great point, a great enhancement, and a significant change in thinness when compared to even the iPad Air. But then again, there are other things that are cool, starting with the anti-glare coating on the display. This has been something that we've dreamed about for years, ever since the launch of the first iPad, and the reason many competing companies mock iPads or other tablets as well. In addition to the A8X chip, which even Phil Schiller was having a tough time repeating, it has a lot of enhancements that are great to see, and there's a lot of great things to come with this iPad. Definitely uh, the better iPad, the better tablet in the market is definitely the iPad Air 2. If you're in the market for a tablet right now, this is a good way to start, and it's great to see that we now have a 16, 64, and 128 gigs at much more affordable options, even though 16 gigs is terrible in my opinion. But everything else about this tablet is great, even though there are some things that we feel that Apple should have addressed uh, with this iPad Air 2 that didn't, and we're going to be talking about them in the next segment. Now let's shift gears over to the things we did not like or that we feel Apple did not address with uh, these announcements, starting with the lack of split screen options for such a big canvas. You have an iPad Air 2, 9.7 inches. I mean, right now we can do split screen multitasking on Galaxy phones. Why can we not do this on a tablet? It makes all the sense in the world, and we are sure that Apple considers it. There are rumors that it'll happen, but Apple has not announced it at all. Apple did not announce it today, and it is really unfortunate as even though Apple touts the iPad as a productivity tool, that's not the reality for everybody. And uh, other things that we're missing are, for example, the iPad Pro. We were hearing a lot of rumors, and uh, we were assuming that since Apple uh, announced the Apple Watch at the iPhone event for a launch until 2015, we were expecting for that to happen here, for them to show us what the iPad Pro was like, and for them to launch it in 2015, but that was not the case. Uh, it seems that there are things that are not finished here, and we are hoping for it to happen as yes, some of us would like a tablet that is more productive and that is not a Surface Pro 3. Another thing that we did not like about this event is Apple's new way of handling the iPad Mini. In the past, you would choose the iPad Mini with Retina Display or the iPad Air. Both tablets looked identical, only one was smaller, but you had the same specifications. Not the case now, even though the price points remain the same. The iPad Mini 3 is really just a different iPad Mini 2 uh, because of the fact that it's got Touch ID. And uh, that is really the only change you get, uh, whereas in the iPad Air 2, you have uh, a new processor, you do have Touch ID, you have the anti-glare coating, you have the new camera, you have all this and this and this that you're not getting in the iPad Mini 3. It makes you wonder if it's really worth it to upgrade to the iPad Mini 3 if all you want is Touch ID. For me particularly, I, Touch ID is important, it's cool, but then again, if you currently have an iPad Mini 2, which is the iPad Mini with Retina Display, it probably is not worth to upgrade, especially because there is no NFC on either 
either of these tablets. And if Apple Pay was a big deal for you, it doesn't matter because you won't be able to use it for payments when it comes to NFC enabled places. All you can use is your iPhone or Apple Watch eventually. So we were really disappointed with the iPad Mini 3. We thought that we'd get the new design and the new things and everything. And so far, sadly, that is not the case. Again, even though the price points remain the same. And finally, let's end this video with one of the things that we are mixed about when it comes to this event, and that is uh, the price points for the iPads. Never have we seen so many iPads being announced. We have, I believe it is, five. I think it's five or six iPads. It's crazy. Starting from $250 to the most expensive iPad Air 2. It's great to see that Apple finally addresses the option for you to get a very cheap iPad. But then again, that's what we want to talk about. That's the reason we're mixed. This is not a very cheap iPad. $250 is still not cheap. There are $99 tablets in the market. $150 tablets in the market. We even have the Nexus 7 with better specifications than this original iPad iPad mini and then again you have to pay $50 more and that's really the reason why we feel that Apple is not really addressing the market it should. First of all we did need an iPad mini with a better price point and we didn't get it here. So we do feel that Apple could have done a better job probably drop that price tag of that lower end iPad to $200 that would have been a great starting point and then they would have probably addressed the fact that uh, they're not offering the same specifications and differences with the iPad mini 3 uh, as a with the iPad Air 2, but uh, again, we could just be talking here. That leads us to the question of this video. What did you think about Apple's event today? Do you think that Apple uh, launched what you were waiting for? Do you think that there are things that were missing? Because uh, in our opinion, you already saw our editorial roundtable. There are so many things that we're missing here. Uh, we have the editorial roundtable video for our full impressions, but we will have more at the Pocket Now Weekly podcast tomorrow. And we will talk about details of this in the Pocket Now Daily later today. So uh, leave us a comment down below and tell us what you think. Sadly, we are a little underwhelmed. That's it for the things we loved and hated about Apple's October 16 event. Do you agree with our points? Make sure you leave us a comment down below with your thoughts and impressions, and also follow us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.